Hey guys, this, on this episode, I'm gonna have with me Sufyan Hamini, a friend of mine, the huge entrepreneur that I, I respect a lot. He is uh, coming uh, from Dakhla, he's now in Casablanca for like uh, one or two days. He came by the, the office to uh, explain to us how exactly he's struggling to build one of his biggest projects. So he moved from uh, being a world class uh, kite surfer to a very huge entrepreneur in Morocco, and now his business is going global. So, uh, Sufyan, how are you, man? Good, good. Thank you very much for having me at your place. I'm really impressed. With Thank you, my friend. Beautiful office. <laughs> well, good <beautiful> people. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I haven't been in Casablanca for a long time, actually. And I'm used to live by the beach, so. <laughs> yeah, so you're here. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time I've spent like four days, actually, or five days in Casablanca. <laughs> but how do you deal with the fact that it's very cold now? Because I know that your place is very sunny. And you used to, to live in front of the beach. It makes a big difference. I haven't seen uh, winter for uh, years. For oh, years. <laughs> And uh, I'm doing this because I really want to expose you know, people that does a lot of amazing things and Sufyan is, uh, I think, the best uh, of them because uh, I know where he's, uh, he came from, uh, so he will tell us uh, his story. But I want also to expose you know, entrepreneurs from Morocco because I think that we have a kind of Moroccan touch in dealing with uh, difficulties and things and how to turn negativity into positive. So just tell us about your, uh, your story, when you started, about your passion. I know that you started by being very well known thanks to the, your sports, which is kind of but yeah. before that, I think that you, the story is very interesting. Yeah, I think the, the, well, the first thing I think I was lucky to be born in uh, Esawira, which is a small town in North Morocco by the, by the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, the advantage of being born in this city, which is like a small city, but with a mix of a lot of culture, a lot of people from all over the world, like a touristical city, but a touristical, with uh, like a lot of young tourists, and a lot of like artists, a lot of inspiring people that are coming there. And uh, it used to be like a big uh, hippie destination in the yeah. 70s, 60s, so... It's like a special spirit there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. People yeah. say that there is a lot of food, so people are, are crazy there, because, mm -hmm. because no, of the... No. No. I, I think people are just nice. <laughs> Yeah, also there is a big mix of, uh, of cultures there, you know, growing up, uh, like, you got like in Saudi, you got like everything, like mix of religions, you got like mosques, synagogues, churches, and this, this helps me a lot to grow up in a, in a really, in a very open-minded uh, uh, atmosphere. It helps me a lot to, to create my personality, and also opens my eyes to, to the rest of the world by, by seeing all these uh, tourists that used to come to Saudi. Yes. And uh, straight away, I was thinking like, wow, there must be a better world. <laughs> well, there must be something else happening, happening elsewhere, you know, than, than what we have here. And uh, not to forget that back in the days, there was no internet, there was no... So tourism was your internet, like meeting people and then bringing uh, cultures from the country to you. I think that you were happy, you were very lucky to, to, to be born in, in a city like this. Yeah. Because you can see a lot of cultures without going to that culture. Yeah, exactly. But the problem also was in the beginning for me, when I, this, this one thing now was when I was really like a little kid. Mm -hmm. and so far, First was the, the barrier of language, so yeah. they, they used to speak French, you know, or, or English, so it's, I couldn't understand. So it was just by like looking and trying to like that was like questions I was giving to myself, you know, if those people are like that I'm looking to are like this, it must be like another place yes, yes. with a different world, with, <laughs> like more. So how did you uh, manage to, to, to learn English? Because I think that it's useful, it was useful for you as a, as a sportsman. How, how, how did you, uh, you know, learn English? Yeah, well, may, may basically I start to learn uh, languages. That, like the luck I had is that I, I wanted to start windsurfing. Yeah. Back in the days in, in 95 or 94, there was like the first windsurfer starts to come to Isawira. So I was like, well, this is something I could start to do. But then uh, there was like, the fact it was like a really expensive sport. So that my, my, I, I tried to get some uh, windsurfing equipment and I remember I had to spend like eight months saving yeah. working with like extra jobs uh, after school. What was your job uh, after school? Uh, I was doing, I was doing like a tailor. I was, okay. doing, I was like doing, 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 doing clothes. I wanted you to, to, to tell this part because <laughs> yes. you were like tailor, tailing the clothes and yeah. I think that you would try to also tail some windsurf. No? Some, yeah, just some, like small kites. Which and, was, yeah. and you started to do like windsurf by, by some windsurf you, you, you made by yourself? No, or? first funny thing I wanted to do uh, windsurfing. So I saved for like eight months to buy this board. Once I had the board, then I figured out that I need the sail, the mass, all the accessories that goes with it was for me like impossible to buy because I was like, okay, we made like three other years saving to, to do that. So I ended up having this, this first windsurfing board, like a huge plastic board, you know, it's all Tiga boards at, uh, at 
my parents' house in the Medina for like three months, just to be invisible, like what I could do in yeah. that mode, you know now. Until one day, I was like walking by the beach, and I saw this guy surfing. So I was like, wow, this is something I, I, this is something I could do with my board. I can just catch waves, you know, with okay. my board. <laughs> the funny thing is that this board was so heavy to carry. I was like 14 years old or 13 years old. So I had always to ask some friends from my street, carry the board with me to the beach in exchange if we can then play with them. Okay, so, so how many friends? Or just two or <laughs> few? Or like four or five. Okay, four or five. So, so funny thing so is was a kind of a bridge. Yeah, with this board, they create a whole generation of surfers. Exactly. <laughs> it was like the first, the first team carrying like, the biggest board. Yeah, in, like, like by accident. Yeah, <laughs> until, until this day, when I was surfing, and then I saw this, I, I just turned and I saw this guy like jumping in the air. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this guy is he's using a surfboard and he's using a, a kite. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was like made in myself these small kites, you know, to play on the beach and sending them to people on the beach. Like, well, why I didn't think of that, you know, like big kite with a surfboard. So it's, it's both of things I'm doing. And the funny thing that this guy, he crashed his kite. So I went to Parlin, I helped him to go out, to come out of the water. Like we, we met, we spoke, and he was going to stay there for one month. Actually, he was testing the first inflatable kites that exist in the kite surfing history. And uh, the funny thing is that at the same time, I, at this time I used to play with uh, some friends who used to have like a music band, playing Binawa mixed with other music and stuff. And we were playing in this restaurant where he came to have dinner with his friends the same night. Yeah. This day we it was like, wow, you are everywhere. Yeah, because it's also very So there, like a nice, uh, like a big friendship starts, and we uh, they, they stayed there for one month, and it was for me like the new occasion to start to, to discover this world and uh, learn it. And uh, what is also interesting, uh, you have uh, like a career of a very well-known sportsman in the, the sport. So what, when exactly you, uh, you know moved from amateur to professional? And also I, I know that you had a lot of support from sponsors. Yeah. So how you know you moved from being a simple amateur in uh, Saudi Arabia to a world class? Actually, sector? it was uh, it was so funny because like uh, back to, uh, to talk about communication and these days and everything was like really complicated because when I started surfing I was always like thinking of like wow I was, I was still young so I was, like just try to do something you know you know to be a professional to travel the world that was like my dream for the. the my whole like, childhood, but uh, it wasn't easy because first, as I said, there was no uh, ways to communicate. So there was uh, at the time there was like no internet. There was no, uh, there, there was really nothing. Yeah. So it was like a dream that I was carrying myself. And even when I was like talking to, to someone about it, like no one was like believing in that, you know, because they were like, wow, this, like first you come from like nowhere, yeah. like no uh, material support, support from your family or from 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 anyone. So it was just like one dream, but at the same time I had no pieces to put together to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. so, so it looks like a three years. But you had the energy in the dream, which is like the beginning of something. Uh, it took a three years of a complete, like a, like a, like a dream living. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I always say, you know, when you when you have nothing, at the same time you have nothing to lose, so you are not. <laughs> Yeah, of course. You know, so, like, for, for you, everything is positive. You know, so I, I just would put this effort in that, and even more and more and more, because what, in the worst case, what could happen? You know, I would just stay as I am now. So let's try, let's try. And uh, it was funny until until I, I started. I remember when they opened the first uh, internet uh, cafe in Isauria. And uh, back in the days, you know, you you pay like five dirhams, and in one hour you just open like one page. You know, you have this this blue <laughs> this blue line that gets full. You know, like it was so slow. And they tried to use that in the beginning to just like have an access to a computer to write down some like presentations about myself and stuff. Then it comes again to the fact that they, uh, my French was not good enough, my mm -hmm. English was really bad. So I always to find some people. That some deals with them, like some tourists, mm. to teach them kite surfing or surfing exchange. And so you were like kind of the minimum. <laughs> cafe and write down some 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 good things so they could send people and, and uh, try to find uh, some sponsors. Then at this time, I had a few uh, pictures and a few little articles on some European magazines. Then there was this uh, this French TV that comes to Isabella like to make a, they they take some photos of me and uh, also this helps a lot, you know, to talk to the bit known in the beginning. This also helps that uh, some people heard about me. And then one day it was like there, I think someone came and he's like, okay, are you Sufyan? I said, yeah, I'm Sufyan, so. So can you say it's, that it would be, have been like more easy uh, if you had like Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook at this time? Because 
Ah, for sure. But like communication makes it uh, much easier, especially like now when we see like uh, like like right now even like uh, I'm still riding for for RRD International and uh, like our contracts now are uh, like the biggest part of uh, our contracts are based on 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 uh, social media, on social media, on the coverage we have, the numbers of likes and the views we have with the through the, the logo or the the products on the videos. Because, because we hear like uh, now it's like uh, in Morocco and also Africa and the Arab world we say that people say it was better before, but I think. Uh, that it's better now because uh, we have more tools to expose our talents and I, I think that you are very talented and the fact that you have this chance to be like a seen by magazines and photographs have helped you to grow and to be international. Yeah, I think it's really important and it's much easier now. There is only one thing I also think is that now, like uh, uh, access to social media is more like open to everyone. It's like it's more uh, democratized, you know, it's, more, it's easier. So now it comes to a point where you have really to have like good content yeah. and to be really someone. As everyone has access to these things, you have to really put some interesting things. Your uniqueness, so you have to be unique. Yeah, you have to be really like, uh, you have to get out of the, of the you know, of the, yeah. of the, the Sure. You know the girl, so, so to have something uh, special. Now everyone can 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 uh, like it, like with like something in the same. You know, uh, any amateur can go. My like, camera nice picture with a nice jump, with a nice sunset. But uh, you, you know, that between that and between like uh, giving good content all the time and uh, and show like a good example and be like a good ambassador mm -hmm. of the sport, I think it's a big difference. And uh, so I think that pictures and and and, and uh, image is very important for for, for the sports. But I will I will uh, I will have like many interviews we, we do because I really like you because uh, uh, we come from the stream from space which is uh, in a lower level. I love you know doing bodyboard and stuff. But do you think that uh, what you learned in the water and with the wind helped you as an entrepreneur? Oh, for because sure. then you we move to to the. For me, one of the best sports and art in the world, which is entrepreneurship. For and sure. you're doing, doing very, very well and a lot of respect. Uh, for sure, uh, because I think you uh, first, you know, you do things uh, when you come from, from the sport uh, world, you do things with uh, first with patience. So, you know, even when I decide to start like doing business, I didn't want to, uh, to a world that I didn't know. So, for me, my first motivation was, you know, I, I start to have like this really dream life when I was 17 and the chance to. I have a nice place in Spain, you know, paid by my sponsors. I have uh, all my trips paid for and go around the world, like spend winters in Hawaii and Brazil and like the nicest beaches in the world. I was like, you know what? Then what's gonna happen if tomorrow I break my yeah. leg, you know, or something, you know, like yeah. all this will stop. Then I will. You so know, I think that entrepreneurship <laughs> is kind of <laughs> is, is your wish. Yeah, I was like to stay, to stay in the, in the game. Yeah, in the beginning I did it just to save my back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, let, let, let's do now like a small business maybe to maintain all this dream life. That was the first one. It was the, it was in Tarifa. It was a, a kite school with a shop in Tarifa for like two years. Then then I start to come in like more 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 often to Morocco. I start also to, to organize the, the, the World Cup in Morocco, the Kite World Cup. Then this was like one of the things that brings me really back here. 2007, 2006. Then I was okay. Let's expand this now. And then, then I, I start doing actually a website for for trips, for kite trips. And they say, you know what? We have like really beautiful locations in Morocco that I really want to show to people. I was like every time I was coming to Morocco, I was like, okay, let's organize a week to like kite clinic with people, take them to Isawira, then to Dakhla. So you were one of the first guy that was like doing the promotion of Dakhla in the kite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did, yeah, we did actually. When was it? The first video of photo shoot for uh, for a kite surf magazine, the French magazine, which we used to. Be like the biggest one. Which, which year? And it was 2004. Okay. It was, uh, yeah, it was uh, April, I think, 2004. And even before that, in 2000, we had like one uh, uh, one of the first photo shoots there uh, with some other friends. But like the first time that Tahra starts to be like known uh, on the kiteboarding map was was after this uh, this shooting we did in 2004. Which was also supported by the Moroccan Office of Tourism and the local authorities. So I, I can understand that you had like uh, facilities because uh, you had a business, but at uh, which time have you decided to go further than your a small business and to make it medium? Because I know that you have uh, what we can call for me, which is already huge, but we have like a resort in Dakar. Yeah. And now you're saying to yourself that you need something bigger. I think it's also the, the, the fact or like the, the state of mind of a competitor. You always want to want to win. So and you try <laughs> another kite. And okay. you always want to push your limits, you know, to push your and, and to go further. And so, the, so the two places. So now we have a place, uh, Dakhla Spirit. Yes, exactly. So I recommend uh, to my friend to go to Dakhla Spirit because <laughs> it's not it's not about uh, the location. Location is is uh, 
It's very beautiful. Uh, the equipment is cool, etc. But I think that we have the spirit of Sufyan there, and uh, and, uh, that, and uh, Sufyan is a really uh, interesting guy that uh, loves uh, struggling and, and love to make very uh, impossible things to, to happen. So I, I love your your uh, your spirit world because uh, it makes a difference. I think that uh, having a Moroccan guy uh, trying to uh, make a, a very genuine, you know, uh, extreme sports guy. Uh, uh, Camp is very interesting. Then I think also you have this new new venture that is coming in yes. this project. Yeah. So now Dakhla, when I when I when I set up uh, Dakhla Spirit, I call it Dakhla Spirit first for for this because you know I started really from nothing. There was like two tents in the beginning, like a simple shower, one solar panel, and this was like uh, I, 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 four, I <laughs> four years and a half ago. And uh, and yeah, today we are really like doing really great, and it's an amazing place, and we are receiving like really cool people there that we share with like our. Uh, spirit and our experiences and, and, and it's very interesting to see that there is lots of like businessmen that does uh, that do uh, kite surf etc because ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is lots of entrepreneur that yeah. wants to to, to uh, uh, be in this this world of extreme sports so i yeah. think that there is a really important link between sports yeah, yeah. And, and kite surfing is also like a well now it's like it's still like a really a fashion sport uh, it's an easy sport so people they learn like really fa- really fast and uh, from different ages you know you can see like people like richard branson yeah. and uh, obama and uh, they, they learned like not a long time ago and uh, also you have kids you know that are like from seven years old you can start learning and it's really easy what is also interesting in that sport is the you have to be humble and humility because you know that you don't control anything yeah, yeah, yeah. just you are riding yeah. and you are at the mercy of you know anything like uh, you, you remember when i uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i think that doing kite surf and also other surf other sports uh, allow you to to stay humble and say okay uh, yeah. i have to accept that you can you can you can fail at any time you can yeah. like uh, go and say okay i'm like uh, mastering the kite surf yeah. but then there is like no, a, as, as, as a sport the feelings are amazing and then you you play with the elements of nature you know the ocean the wind the beach just these three things makes you already like come down and come calm, down you know? yeah. even if you are like uh, know who you are or no one the wind don't know uh, how you much know. you yeah, and, and the funny thing is that also, like you can see, when we come to, for example, the Dakhla Spirit, I did it, like, people like to have like, the, all the tables like together, so people, they eat together, they, and, and then really sometimes, like, when I'm in the tables, like, having lunch or dinner with people, sometimes, like, it's interesting, because I, I speak with one, maybe he's, like, the CEO of, like, a, a huge company, I don't know where, like, in yeah, France or Germany, is, is and then at the same time, you know, like, still, you have, you have, like, someone who, he's not, yeah, who's, like, who's, like, what, <laughs> and they are all together, they are all talking about the same things, same thing. they are all, like, barefoot, or, like, they, they are all, like with yeah, t-shirts exactly. and with, you know it's it's really uh, it brings people together it's a sport where people learn how to help each other you know you, you also yeah, because, yeah. catch my guy put my you know it's it's really yeah. even the subjects of discussions you know between like high surfers are always like about wind how was your session you know when you see this this this, this big smile on their faces at the, at the end of the day after like a good kite session you know it's really something that brings everyone so together. you're kind of like of hospital and uh, for, for people that want to disconnect with the uh, the uh, very busy material world exactly. Yeah, I think it's a really amazing and it's a really big luck for me as well to leave uh, uh, yeah. these like, great moments with other people. You know, people when they come there, they distress. You know, they are so, so, so it's not a business where I'm, where I'm sharing stress with people. It's a business where I'm sharing, I'm sharing like the best yeah. moments of their, of their, of their, of their like, year, you know. So they are in holiday, so they are really like doing their best. But I think which is interesting when you do kite is like when it's 7 p.m. and like the sunset. Yeah. So you are very happy because you say, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive, I'm everything good. So I, I know this feeling because the problem when you do kite is there's a lot of stress because you know yeah. that you are doing, some, doing something dangerous yeah. and, and uh, you know that uh, at any time you can like hit someone or, or, yeah, hit yeah. or, or also lose your kite and, and uh, I've been also a lot of time in very dangerous situation and I think that humility of this sport is very is very important because yeah. it's like the wind the, 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 the water then they allow you to play sure, yeah, they yeah. know you can you know really if they, if they don't want you to play they can like make you feel uh, hurted and then wanted to yeah i mean it's not it's, it's like a, it's an easy sport but it's a technical sport it's, i mean it's like it's like yeah. driving a car you know if you give like to drive a car is easy but if, if you give a car to someone and then like explain him like the difference between the brake and the accelerator you can you know yeah, face up and hit a, hit a wall so the, yeah, the, the t-shirt really, is very important so it's a, it's, i like your, your t-shirt you have it's a really important to to like for beginners to take lessons in the beginning and it goes like really easy you know it's it, it, like, you, you learn really fast i think uh, you need a week to start to yeah like, in a place like Dakhla, it really was really good. It's like great conditions, it's like shallow water, no rocks, nothing like constant wind with a good instructor, good equipment. I think in three days you start like a man already.
So now what's the next uh, project, which is, uh, I saw some yeah. pictures. And you have also this company, uh, production company in, in yeah. Rifa. Yeah, so yeah, two exactly. big projects, <laughs> company and... Uh, yeah, so now, yeah, I'm starting to, to, to do something also with media, because it's been always my job, you know, to promote the uh, brands and my sponsors who are uh, like, uh, doing things for them, writing, you know, like, uh, representing them and uh, like promoting their, their names and logos everywhere. So, uh, like, indirectly, I, I got the discussion mm -hmm. of, of uh, media work. And the uh, good thing is also that I, I've lived like the evolution of this media work since the first days without internet when you used to work just with like a paper magazine so and uh, you know. no photo shoots then I, and I've seen like the evolution first the videos of, uh, on YouTube uh, yeah. and, uh, so you know Instagram because you use that for yeah, your this, this Twitter so, so I like, really through all that you know and, and you had to keep your evolution you know with all the new things in that so I say yeah we're not like now <laughs> to do my proper uh, like production company so I said uh, after this with, uh, with a friend of mine who's uh, Julien who's also a, a Kaiser people writer from uh, North of France uh, He's for me like uh, someone who's representing also like the young, the new generation. He's, oh, is he? He's uh, he's 22 years old. Like, uh, so he's full, uh, a baby. Yeah, full energy, yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he loves like to play with all these new uh, tools, you know, all these new things. And, and so really, like we are really competing each other. It's like really good on that way. Then on Dakhla, at the same time, so like I'm doing this uh, big uh, resort now, which is uh, located uh, it's actually on the best uh, location in the Lagoon of Dakhla. It's a dream place. It's the place where I went myself, where I camped myself the first time in Dakhla back in like, 19. It's really amazing. Like now, works are in progress. When less than one year, we will open the first uh, first part, and uh, it's over. Uh like it's 170,000 meters square mm -hmm. with a big cable park mm -hmm. and uh, different activities. And this is gonna be like another concept. You have, you have the name or not yet? Dakhla Resort. Dakhla Resort. Yeah. We also, we'll have like also a nice pool. Uh, the concept will be like uh, more luxury, more exquisite on the compare, in comparison to what they have now. Because I really believe and, and think that Dakhla needs something like that now. Like all the, the camps and all the establishments that are in Dakhla now are offering nearly the same prestation, you know, same the same uh, kind of accommodation. Some bit you know better than some others, but uh, the, the concept is a bit the same. And now I think it's time to do something different and to go like to an a higher level, especially that uh, there is now more flights going to Dakhla, there is even uh, one international flight now coming from uh, Paris like uh, once a week. Yeah. So I think it's the right moment to, to develop something like that. And uh, I, I, I think that it will be a success because uh, we have the kites in Dakhla and, and uh, we have results that are doing very well, but we need maybe something uh, with more high end, uh, high end you know, uh, experience in, in terms yeah. of uh, luxury, etc. And we know that there is a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that, that are uh, uh, doing kites, so I think that it can be a good destination, which is also good for the, the region and also for the city. Yeah. But uh, what do you think about the importance of digital and social content for, for your business? Do you think that you something that uh, you can improve uh, because there is like some tools that you need, uh, like Booking.com, etc. Or do you think that you should also, as an entrepreneur, ignore that uh, the field of creating content by yourself for your for your life? I think actually in a, in, a, in our uh, or like frame or it's more what you just said it's more what we do with the image we sell what we do with our proper content with uh, our social media with our google campaign with our websites it's even more important than than than, than what we can do with like big these big booking platforms like booking.com or expedia or actually, so you, can, you, can, you can compete with them by your own knowledge and, and I, content I, creation. I think we're not even competing with them we're completing another concept because those those people are first those platforms are selling like more like mass tourism you know, like Mr. X that wants to go to a city looking for hotels, so the first easy thing he will go is like booking. But for us, we don't sell like hotel rooms, we sell, uh, we sell a, a concept which uh, mainly include uh, uh, bike surfing or surfing holidays with the accommodation. So people, they come first for the activity, then the accommodation comes in second. You know, it's not, they didn't come for the room. <laughs> that's not, that's not, not, they didn't come for the, for the hotel room. So it's not just by putting this on Expedia or on booking and they did like, like the machine like working by itself to work now with like our our job is more to personalize more our concept to have this uh, this uh, exchanges with with guests in terms of uh, image of everything. So I think it's a much better thing for us to to be more focused on our own uh, image, and especially digital image, because today internet and even now, like like, like let's say 80 or 90 percent of, of the customers we're having are coming through uh, internet actually. Yeah, because I work with a lot of uh, advertisers, marketing with big yeah. names, etc. But they see internet like something that if it, internet that was not existing, it would be better for them because now they it's more work for them and because they have to deal with Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, etc. But I feel that for your case as 
uh, new cats as an entrepreneur, it's an opportunity because you can grow and oh, make the difference. Sure. For sure, actually. Be, I think more difficult to, to make the difference if you don't have now the, the social media platforms. Ah, for sure. It's a, it's a really, it's a it so make much. You ah, it, 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 first, it, it's first we are like more open on the world, you know, it's, it's a door to the, to the world. Yeah. So now sometimes our customers come from Canada, coming from the US, coming from even Australia, all the way down to that. But these customers would never have been if it, without internet. Yeah. Maybe if it, there was no internet, no digital like marketing and all these things. Or maybe have like one uh, contract or two with some like two to two, two operators in France. One yeah, which is depending. Uh, yeah, then, then, then <laughs> now with internet, it's really like opening our town. It's like easy. I would just check like best destinations with best flights, flights to Dakhla. They would just promote those destinations and it's, and it's done. And what I think is also interesting for you is you can, uh, as we say, that fill the channels and platforms with, with your uniqueness. And because now the cost of production are very low, you can produce very beautiful content with, with phones or, or small cameras. Uh, post production is easy, there are a lot of tools, so you can be the producer of your uniqueness yeah. and then promote your unique experience on the web. Yeah, and also, really, as I said, it's really super easy. And when you know, it's for me, I, I, I like like I, I like traveling and I like like see like and follow always what is happening like around the world and uh, especially you know when you like when you see the, the experience in the US generally things happens there that like uh, a year or two after you come to Europe and now like uh, eight years or one year or ten years ago uh, there were like the internet process and the internet uh, business in the US was already like 20% more than, than in Europe you know yeah. people like are more buying things like on their phones and everything is more like with, with internet and this is just the beginning you know like you know, a long time ago I was in, uh, in London with some friends uh, like in uh, financing and, uh, think already that in some years even like physical banks will not exist anymore. Yeah, it's like you know, it's all gonna become like uh, you know it's like it's like internet is the, is, uh, is the key. The key is the new language. So uh, thank you for uh, the interview. Thank you. I want to say that uh, we are here to help uh, African and Arab uh, entrepreneurs. So he's African, I'm African, he's Arab, I am Arab as well. And uh, this channel and uh, what we are doing is to share with us our experience as a social content uh, professional, which, which I am, and also as an entrepreneur that are growing their business. And uh, I really want to, to expose and to, to show to the world that in emerging markets, we can do also a lot of good job, even if we don't have the spotlights, because the media scene in the emerging markets is very, uh, how, not that, that developed. And, uh, and uh, this, is the, this is what we want to do with Basquito and also as a, as a guy that loves entrepreneurship, I want to promote guys like you and I'm very happy to have you, my friend. Thank you.